Okay, lecture three three digital signals. Okay, these are the things we're communicating around, so we should probably talk about them for a minute. Uh, a digital signal is a continuous signal transmitted with the assumption that the receiver will interpret it as representing a finite number of values. Typically, only two values are represented, binary one or zero, also called Boolean true and false. Digital signals are the signals of digital circuits, of which CPUs, memory, reading, writing devices, and input-output devices are made. So everything. These days, so much stuff is digital. Even your music is digital. It's all digital. Uh, why would one want to discard the potentially infinite amount of information resolution in a continuous signal? Okay. So assuming that an analog signal could, could take on any real number in its range, um, there are an infinite number of real numbers between any two real numbers. So uh, an infinite amount of information. Why do we want to give that up? I mean, it's amazing, right? Uh, so primarily because one, often our transmission has a limited number of potential values especially when dealing with data stored as computer memory bits. So if it's stored in a computer medium, it's already down, it's already going to be digital, right? So we might as well transmit it as digital. And two, noise. So in the form of offsets, biases, and uh, random signals added to the transmitted signal through a number of mechanisms. With noise, we lose significant resolution and a trade-off emerges between voltage resolution and fidelity. Throughout the history of digital electronics, the tendency has been to sacrifice voltage resolution, settling for binary encoding, for time resolution. Digital electronics can send and receive signals that switch between 0 and 1 at blazing speeds. So it's turned out that for most of our technologies, it's way faster to transmit information with just a binary encoding and switching between the two levels very, very rapidly. Um, that has turned out to be easier than getting better resolution on the line between the different voltage levels. Of course, any you know real signal is analog at the end of the day. Any real voltage is analog. We're just reading it as being a 1 or a 0, right? A number of digital signal standards have been developed uh, with the complementary metal oxide semiconductor or CMOS standard being the most popular. But several others remain in use, including the transistor-transistor logic or TTL standard, which is now described. All these standards are similar, so describing one is sufficient for our purposes. Just kind of understanding how digital signals are, are um, created and, and interpreted. So with reference to figure 3.3, the TTL standard defines interpretations for voltage level ranges for both transmission output and reception input. Okay, so let's take a look down here. We have the transmission side, which has output ranges defined, and then the, the receiver side, which has input voltage ranges defined. So then I have this blue signal that's just like a uh, sort of giving an example of what a signal would look like in time. So the output, if you're trying to output a zero, okay, trying to output a zero, your voltage should be between 0 and 0.4 volts. So that's the, the uh, crosshatch that goes, I don't know what it looks like on the screen, but for me, it's upper right to lower left. <laughs> um, and uh, for a 1 output, we should be, to be between 2.4 volts and 5 volts. Okay, so that's what the TTL standard says. Um, and anything in between is not a valid um, output range for 
a digital a digital signal, a TTL digital signal. So if you're outputting it, it you and you want it to be uh, zero, it should be between zero and 0.4 volts. If you're outputting it and you want it to be a one, it should be between 2.4 and 5 volts. On the input side, okay, the range gets a little larger. Okay, so on the input side, uh, a zero goes from um, zero to 0.8 volts as acceptable to be interpreted as a zero, and between two and five volts is, is interpreted as a one. Now, if you're in between, this is no man's land in here. You don't want to be in there. So if your digital signal is, for some reason, the amplitude's too small of it, and you end up with your high level down in the gray zone, it's, it's not a, a valid digital signal. Um, and depends on, so, so the, the TTL standard would not would not guarantee what would happen <laughs> at that point so any individual device might behave however you want but if it's ttl standard and you know if you get between two and five volts on the input it will be interpreted as being a one okay uh, great so this is this is the the sort of standard there and notice there's the gap there between the, the output and the input um, so the output ranges are stricter than the input ranges. Uh, this accounts for noise added to a signal between transmission and reception, and it's called the noise margin. So from the figure, what is the noise margin in this case? 0.4 volts, right? We've got 2.4 went down to 2 on the input. 0 0.4 went up to 0.8, so we have a 0.4 noise margin on this. So for TTL, that's what the noise margin is. Most digital circuits can function properly with signals greater than their maximum defined voltage and those less than their minimum, typically zero volts. Most TTL circuits will interpret signals greater than five volts as one and those less than zero volts as zero, but it's not guaranteed, again, by the standard. So uh, you don't want to shoot for that. That's not your, that's not your design goal. Um, is to rely on that. Uh, in lecture 5.3, so in a couple weeks, uh, some building blocks of digital circuits are described. How analog signals are converted to digital and vice versa are explored in lecture 6.1, so another week or two after that we'll talk about how to go from uh, analog to digital signals and digital to analog signals, but uh, for now just trust that one can do this, um, that it is possible. Uh, a to D and D to A conversion. So uh, any questions on digital signals, standards thereof, life in general, why you chose to be in this class? Okay, I can't answer that for you.